Hi, in this video we are going to learn how to find probabilities for normally distributed data using the TI-84 family of graphing calculators. Um, this one I am specifically using the TI-84 plus color edition, but you can also use any of the TI-83 or TI-84 and the procedure would be the same. For this, what we have, the situation that we have, is the monthly utility bills in a city are normally distributed with a mean of $110 and a standard deviation of $13. Find the probability that a randomly selected utility bill in the city is A, less than $85, and B, between $90 and $120, and C, more than $130. For this... Um, I am not going to convert to z-scores first and then find the area, which is the traditional way of doing things if you are using table values. Um, it's much quicker just to use the graphing calculator, so I wanted to show you the benefits of doing that. So let's get started. The first thing that it's asking for is the probability that it's less than $85. It's always best to draw a picture. For the first one, I will make it more detailed where it has all of the information based on um, the mean and the standard deviation. For this, it tells us that the mean of this probability distribution mu is $110. These are the two parameters that you must know in order to use the normal distribution. Um, the other one is standard deviation. So if we drew out our picture to kind of help us visually see what our area is, um, for this one, like I said, I am going to draw the first one using all of the information. The rest I will just do a rough sketch for just because to save time. So for this, we know that our probability distribution is centered at 110. And then when we go out one standard deviation in each direction, we would add 13 to get to the next value. So that would put this at 123. And if we go to the left, we would subtract the 13. So that would put us at 97. We could go out two standard deviations would put us at 136. And if we went to the left, we would be at 84. And then for the final, normally we go out no more than three standard deviations because it's very, very, very unusual to have anything that is more than three standard deviations. Remember, it's unusual to have anything more than two standard deviations, and it's very unusual to have more than three standard deviations. So if I went out to three standard deviations, I would be at 149, and down here I would be at 71. So if we look at the situation that we're looking for in this particular problem, we are look for, looking for the probability that our randomly distributed or a random variable x is less than 85 in this distribution. So 85 would be here, which is almost two standard deviations. So this would be considered somewhat unusual because it's, it's not very likely to happen. And so we'll look at the area to see um, what it ends up being or the probability. So the command that you are going to do for this is we are going to find the normal CDF. The normal CDF stands for a cumulative distribution function, which means that it starts clear down here at negative infinity, and it just keeps adding the cumulative area that's shaded in until you get to the stopping point. So the, what you're going to put in, especially if you don't have the table features that pop up, is you are going to use lower, the lower limit, comma the upper limit and then you need to know the mean and the standard deviation so for every single problem you would look for what is my lowest value that is shaded in this case we don't have a lower limit so that would be negative um, infinity and so I will show you how to put that into the calculator the upper limit is going to be your stopping point so in this case it would be 85 since we're looking for all values less than and then our mean and our standard deviation would be 13 so if you have an older TI-83 or TI-84, you would plug into your calculator normal CDF. And then you would put, to represent negative infinity, I use negative 1 E99, which just basically is saying that I have negative 1 with 99 zeros behind it. My upper would be 85, my mean would be 110, and my standard deviation would be 13. 
So to find this feature on our calculator, what we are going to do is we are going to hit second and the vars. Above it, it says D-I-S-T-R, which stands for distributions. This is all the probability distributions that we have in the graphing calculator that are programmed in there. And we would choose option two, normal CDF. Remember that PDF stands for a probability distribution function or a probability density function. Um, that's just for one individual. If it's at exactly 85, that's when you would use that. Most of the time with normal, we are dealing with the cumulative distribution and not just one exact value. So we're going to pick option two. Our lower, like I said, we're going to plug in negative 1 E99. If this does not come in up on your calculator, just put it in simply like this. The negative 1 E9, the comma button, remember, is above the 7. To get the E button, we do not want to do alpha E because that will give you whatever stored for E the last time that you used your calculator. So we want to actually do the second and the comma button. Above it, there's an EE, which represents the exponential. Um, and it, basically, this is scientific notation. So notice it's a smaller E than I would get if I put the alpha in. 9, 9. And then my upper limit is 85. My mean is 110. And my standard deviation is 13. We would hit paste. And then... It shows you, so those of you that have the older calculators, this is what you're, you would type in. It should look exactly like this. And then you just hit enter again. And it tells us that this occurs approximately 0.0272% of the time. So if I were to interpret this one just so that you guys can see one with an interpretation, we could say that the probability, or we there's a lot of different ways that you can say it. We could say that there is a 2.72% probability of selecting a utility bill in this city. This is just for this city, wherever we got the data from, that is less than $85. So that would be the interpretation. The interpretation is important because in the real world, um, that is the information that you would give to somebody else. Um, this would be considered unusual, and it just kind of depends on, it's, it's not extremely unusual, but anything less than 5% um, usually is where we kind of cut off the standard cutoff value. Um, is 5%, so anything less than 5% would be considered unusual. So this would be an unusual bill, a bill that is less than $85. For the second one, they asked us to find the probability that the bill is between 90 and $120. So we're saying that if I randomly select my random variable, what is the probability that my random variable x is between 90 and 120? So if we look up here where we have it already um, drawn out with all of the units, we can see that it's a pretty large area, 90 to 120. Um, so with this, I'm just going to do a rough sketch so that you can kind of see what we are looking for, what our area is that we're looking for. Um, we remember that it is centered at 110. The 110 is important. Okay, The 90 would be between 1 and 2 standard deviations below, and the 120 would be between 0 and 1 standard deviations above. So we are looking for this area in between. Remember, the probabilities are just equal to the area under the normal curve. Okay. Um, so for this, what we are looking for is we are looking for the probability that our random variable x is greater than 90 but less than 120. So it's between 90 and 120. We would still do the same thing that we did up here with our lower and our upper. This time, this would be our lower. So if we were plugging this into our calculator, we would want it to read normal CDF. Our lower would be 90, our upper would be 120, and our mean and our standard deviation do not change. So those would still be the same. So when I do the second distributions, option two, my lower is 90, 
My upper is 120. My mean and my standard deviation did not change, so I don't have to change those. And then we would just hit enter again to get the answer. So for this one, we see that it's approximately 0.7172. Um, 7153 is what it rounded, so that's why I rounded up to the 2. So we could say that there's approximately a 71.72% probability of selecting a bill in this city that's between $90 and $120. The last one that we asked for, um, for C, we asked for more than or greater than $130. So we're looking to see what is the probability that it's more than $130. So if we look up here, 130 would be here. So we can see that it's just going to be a small area. By drawing the picture, it helps you to see approximately how much area you should have shaded. And it allows you to kind of get a rough ballpark so that if you get an answer in your calculator that doesn't make sense, uh, you may want to look at what you put in because it's possible that you put something in wrong. So understanding um, what, how the standard deviation works and how your shading works does help you out to keep you from making mistakes. So the 130 would be up here. Like I said, it was almost two standard deviations away. Um, so we would say that this is 130. And so we're looking for this area right here. So this should be a small area. The notation that we would use for this one is we are looking for the probability that X is greater than 130. So for this one, if we notice, this one has a lower limit. It has a lower because 130 is the starting point for that shading. So we would do normal CDF. We would start with 130. This time we don't have an upper limit, so what I use for that is 1E99. This basically represents one with 99 zeros behind it, which is pretty much positive infinity. It's, it's really as close as your calculator is going to get to positive infinity. And then we would still put in the 110 and the 13. So let's go ahead and do that, get this answer. And so we would put in the 130. Remember that to get the E, we would do the 1 second comma 99. Nine, and then we would keep the mean and the standard deviation the same. And then we just hit enter one more time. And we end up with approximately 0 0.0619 um, and since it's 196 or 197 we would really round this up to 0 0.0620 if you were rounding to the four places. So for this one there's about a 6% probability of selecting a bill in this city that's more than $130. This is unusual but it's not extremely unusual. This is kind of on the line there of whether this would be considered unusual or not. Just um, as you go through statistics and learn more about alpha levels and different things, you'll have a more intuitive feel of whether the probability is unlikely or not. As always, thanks for watching.